So today I'm gonna to show you how to refresh your bouquet to get a little more life out of it. You can see that there are a lot of flowers in this that are still lovely and very fresh, but there are a few that are not so pretty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to remove all the stems, separate them by good stems and bad, replenish fresh water, recut the stems of all of the old blooms, add them back into the vase, and then add in and introduce some new fresh cut stems. So here are some fresh cuts I just pulled out of the garden. There's a combination of Mike's beautiful dahlia. We're supposed to get a freeze here tomorrow, so I don't want it to die. <laughs> Zinnia, um, Coreopsis, which are these wispies here, um, French marigold, and some cosmos on this side. So, wood. And that marigold almost serves like a, a frog where I can place the stems in and hold them in place based on where I want them. So I'm just giving some of these a fresh cut because they were in the last arrangement. Or off to the sides, you want something kind of trailing off, which can be really beautiful. And as a general rule, always cut the stems on the angle so that they can drink up as much water as possible. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll have a double stem and I'll make a decision about whether I want it as a double stem or whether I want to be able to place it in two spots. In this case, I want to place it in two spots. Pretty light pink one there. See that? Beautiful yellow. Sometimes I'll do this in the morning, um, my flower arrangements, so that I can enjoy them throughout the day, especially if I have a day off um, at home. <clears throat> it's just kind of a nice, calming way to start the day, too. Sometimes Dario wants a little love first, so we'll play ball or something first to wear him out. Today he's being patient and I'm gonna play with him after this. <laughs> Here is Mike's beautiful Dahlia. It's just a gorgeous stem. <laughs> this vibrant orange is just so pretty to fall. Pop that right in there. <laughs> Sometimes I'll put my arrangements on a pedestal so I can kind of look at them as I'm making them. See what's happening all the way around, where a stem might be needed. That looks like a great spot right there. There's a little area right in here, <clears throat> which might be great to place some of these Coreopsis, which are just kind of blousey flowers. And sometimes I'll group them together before I place them in just to give like a pop of a certain color, like the yellow right here. So really pretty. And I'll place them right in. And that fills in that spot really pretty. Maybe one more. And 
sometimes I'll even take a stem that hasn't bloomed yet just because it adds a little interest and a little different texture to the arrangement. There. And this one I'm going to separate so that now that I'm getting pretty full, <clears throat> I don't have too much bushiness at the stem area. And looks like there's one I can save for seed there. I'm going to put those in right here. I'm not liking how he's sticking out size-wise, so I can do one of two things. I can move him into the center to give the center some height, <clears throat> or I can cut him down, but I'm gonna just move him. And again, I'm gonna separate these just to allow it to be a little bit more narrow going into the arrangement. And once your arrangement gets pretty full, <clears throat> the thinner stems go in a little bit easier. <clears throat> I'm going to save this short guy for a smaller arrangement. And these marigolds, I'm just going to add this last zinnia in here. two on this stem. So down there. And go back into the center. And there now he's sitting in there nicely. And this one. Take the bench off. And that should sit in there nicely as well then. <clears throat> So now I'm going to make some smaller arrangements with kind of the last of the blooms I have in the, the garden. There's more Coreopsis in French Marigold, but I'm going to take my chances that those will last. There's some Bougainvillea that I added in to this arrangement, and I have these really beautiful hand-blown glass vessels that are so nice. Um, close to Halloween, they remind me of pumpkins. I've actually set a napkin holder, a ceramic napkin holder inside these to act like a flower frog. Um, So we'll see how that works on these. These marigolds act as a nice flower and filler at the same time because they're so bushy. Big 
beautiful orange zinnia. arrangement. Okay. like the way it looks. Same with this bougainvillea. And bougainvillea, when you're working with it, it has these spikes on it. So you've got to be real careful. so pretty and dainty that it's still fun to work with. I love arranging flowers so much that that's one of the reasons I save my seeds. So that I always have plenty to keep in the landscape and plenty that I can use as fresh cuts. Years ago, um, when I had uh, a little farm in town, um, it's like a little house in town, a friend and I created a um, cutting garden in the backyard that sat behind the garage that looked like a barn. And um, so when you took things out of that garden, you weren't taking away from the, the landscape in the front at all. So I could always have fresh cut garden flowers <clears throat> without um, diminishing the look in the front yard, which was really fun. So sometimes you use those things that you learn from the past and you find ways to incorporate them into your new situation. When I see um, spent um, seeds, seed buds like this, I just snip them off and put them to the side to save them for next year's garden. Um, as I'm going through, it's a real easy way to save your seeds. so much. So there's one. And then I'm going to make the other. Sometimes when you're worried that you might not have enough flowers, it's good to just kind of bounce between the two so you can balance the amount of flowers you're using in one versus the other. And it really kind of helps give you an idea of whether you have enough stems or how you can stretch them, as I like to say, to make it work.
lips. This is so wispy and fun. And it'll partner really well with some of these mini zippers uh, I have. <clears throat> and I'm trying to keep these arrangements a little bit lower because these sit on the bookshelf. So I'm not wanting to get too much height into them. a few stems to my desk bath and office arrangements from last week. Um, and there are a few blooms that really were spent there, so um, I didn't have to do too much to them, which is allowing me to use more stems on these two new ones, which is nice. <clears throat> and sometimes if you have a a zinnia or a flower that's not perfect, just tuck it in and then trust me, by the time you are done with the whole arrangement, you will not notice that that flower is not perfect. Um, you can set others in front of it or behind it and it'll just kind of sandwich in there. Beautifully. Sometimes it's kind of fun to arrange the flowers. Um, in front of your camera like this so that you kind of see what's happening all the way around. It's kind of an interesting way to do it, I think, as I'm filming these videos. This one has some unsightliness in the front, so I am just going to tuck a few leaves in front of that just to... and use it just for some interest in there. You can see how that looks. Just gives it a different texture. Just fun. Quite fun. I think that one's done. I'm going to go back and add some of these pinks into this one since that's looking pretty full. spacer, which kind of holds the flowers in place, kind of like a flower frog would. Those zinnias just kind of help to break up some of the smaller blooms that the marigolds provide. call them focal point flowers because your eye tends to get caught by them. And then sometimes it's berries or little buds like this that can add some um, textural interest as well. So I'll just tuck those in. Sometimes I'll try to do them in threes or fives.
clean spot right in there, so I'm gonna tuck that in there. There it goes. And the rest of what I have in here is pretty much stems, with the exception of this girl right there. Tuck her right in there. So I'll be right back to show you how we ended up. And then I gather up all of my stems and cut flowers and petals that shed. And I actually throw that right into the compost to break down into awesome soil for next year's garden. <laughs>